So let's talk about this church usher that was attacked as he arrived to church this last Sunday morning. Uh, the details of what happened and what we can learn from this uh, situation, very important. So it was uh, 6.45 a.m. this last Sunday as we're recording this. 72-year-old male usher had just arrived to church and uh, was parking his car in the church parking lot. Now, I'm showing you, uh, you know, I, I don't really like to talk about the churches, and I've had a couple of people ask me, why are you talking about the churches necessarily? And, and there's just sometimes we need to talk about details. Cornerstone Church, Nashville, and and in and, and a little suburb, I'm assuming Madison. Uh, I'm not familiar with the area, but uh, in front of the church here, you can see, I mean, and I'm showing you a picture of only really half of the parking lot, and it extends way out of view up there, it appears. So this is a huge parking lot. I'm showing you, I'm talking about the churches because I'm hoping you're taking some of this information and taking it to heart and looking it up, maybe even digging a little bit more and maybe even putting a presentation together for your fellow ushers to show them this and talk a little bit more about it. So 72 year old male is arriving to church, parks his car, and then apparently he starts heading towards the church. Apparently he didn't get too far as I'm reading the reports and a young male runs up to him. Nothing is said. The male just runs up to him and hits him in the head with a pistol, you know, and, and doesn't say a word. So basically a tussle ensues, some kind of fight. And uh, the young man drops the gun and uh, and picks and the sus the victim picks it up and tosses it in the car. And so. And I'm just imagining what this tussle's like for just a couple of seconds or, or, or a few moments, that kind of thing. And uh, then basically it, there's other people starting to show up in a parking lot, apparently. So the suspect approaches another church member in the parking lot who's calling 911 about this. And this seems to be moving pretty fast. And he tries to take his phone and run. And then apparently... A couple males, including the one who was he was taking his phone, jumped him and uh, restrained him. You know, and I don't normally talk about age stuff, but hey, I'm getting older. Uh, and these are like this is a 72 year old, a 64 year old and like a 50 year old. And this guy happens to be 23, as we're going to talk about. And they're chasing him down and jumping him and holding him down until the cops arrive. Good for them. I'm happy to hear that. So they did what they needed to do. And so the rest of the story, let's talk about this for a minute, because this is a quick video, but an important lesson here for us, several lessons. The rest of the story, just like I mentioned, suspects a 23-year-old male, runs onto the property there, apparently runs over to that uh, usher, the 72-year-old usher. Well, how he got to that parking lot is in a stolen car. He had just driven that, apparently had just stolen it that morning from somewhere else in that uh, area. So it had just been a few hours old. Uh, he stole the vehicle, rolled up to the church, and I don't know what he was doing. I don't know if he was thinking he was going to steal a different car, the usher's car, what it was. I haven't heard about that. Now, interesting fact, this, this young man is on probation for an aggravated assault conviction. And so he's already got lots of trouble, and he got a lot more on this day. And, I, and an interesting note, in the charges, they don't talk about it in the story, obviously, but in the charges, uh, police ended up charging him with several things. And one of those was they charged him with a felon, basically a felon in possession of a gun, unlawful possession of a gun by a convicted felon or a felon. So, uh, so he's got a bad past. And he rolls up to church in the morning on this peaceful, quiet Sunday morning, Ushers just arrive into church, and uh, all of a sudden, this guy is there and meets him. What I want to make note of here, that here's the lessons we can learn from this, and I'm all about that. I want you to be safer. I want your church to be safer. I want us to be doing the best we can do with the people that we have and the time that we have. So here's what we need to look at. Bureau of Justice Statistics, I've been following these statistics for a long time. Uh, and I've been watching them since 2020, or I've calculated them back to 2020, and then I've been watching them for the last 10, 12 years. And here's what those statistics, and these are Bureau of Justice Statistics compiles police reports. 
And so when the police say something happened at a church, church parking lot, those kind of things, those statistics are in there. It's a lot of work to go through and dissect that stuff. But the information is there at the Bureau of Justice Statistics. So their stats from pol police reports are very consistent with these numbers for the last 23 years. Only 33% of stuff that occurs to churches occurs inside the building. Majority, 66%, as you can see here, occur uh, outside their activity. They're on the property. They're at an activity location. Uh, but they occur outside of the actual ministry event. Occurred during the event, only 40%. Occurred in off hours, almost 60%. So, so far what we're looking at is outside in the parking lot on the sidewalks, before or after church is a majority of the stuff is going on. And then a single, attack, single attacker at 60, 71% uh, of the time. So, so as we look at this stuff, there's some lessons we can continue. And I've been talking about this stuff for a while. Uh, and, and I just want to continue to reinforce that, that we need to pay attention to our parking lots, sidewalks, that kind of stuff. It seems to me like the ideal place for us to be is at the front doors, looking out into the parking lot and watching our lobby. If we could have one single entrance right where people come out of the parking lot into the lobby, that's a very efficient place to be. But in this situation, we also have to talk about being in the parking lot. So, I mean, we got to pay attention to these things before and after uh, the service, before and after things are going on. So ideally, the statistics and crime events and problems around churches tell us, ideally, the security team members, you and I should be the first people to show up and we should be the last to leave. And I know that that's not easy. We should be there first. We should be there. If we've got people like this usher arriving at 645 in the morning, I should be there at 630. Our security team people should be there at 630. And I'm sure if the ushers arriving at 645, there's probably other members of the leadership team that are there at 6.30 or 6. So you and I should be the first ones there, and we should be the last ones to leave. And again, I know it's not easy to do. I have a couple people on my team that I truly love, but man, as soon as things are starting to wind down after church, I look around and they're gone. And so it's like they're done. As soon as things are even starting to remotely wind down, they're gone. And so, but I do think that you and I should look at, and I love them. I'm not criticizing them. I completely understand that we're volunteering. And I'm sure we all have folks like that. And we have others that'll stick around and uh, that are very dedicated and very willing to be there. So we just got to work with what we have. But I want to encourage you to encourage yourself or to encourage them that we should be the first to arrive in the morning and we should be the last ones leaving if we're truly doing our job because there are so many instances you can look at uh, ministers. I mean, there's uh, first thing that always comes to my mind when I talk about this topic is uh, the pastor in Northern Idaho many years ago, that's going out to his park out to the parking lot and somebody ends up meeting him out there towards his car and shoots him several times. He survives. There's another one with a drummer as a practice stayed over just a little bit longer after church heading out to the car He's also shot. And so I just want to remind us that we are the security and we're there to protect the people. And that should include our teams. We should be around there on Sunday mornings. And I know it's not easy to do. I know it. it's hard to get enough people and it's hard to stay there, get there early and stay there uh, on a Sunday or a Saturday whenever you meet. We should try to at least be making some rounds every few minutes into the parking lot. During the services, I try for every 10 minutes to have somebody walk through the parking lot. If you have a bigger parking lot, you might not need somebody dedicated to that. And I know sometimes you've got other duties. Sometimes we may have to fill in for ushers. We may have to pass the bucket, pass the plate, whatever you call it. We may have to pass out pamphlets. We may have to help other with other duties, and I completely get that. 
But in between, if we keep moving, if we get those jobs done, and my examples I've, I've given in the past is like you take the offering, you go in to help with offering, you come out, walk through the parking lot real quick, go back, pass out those pamphlets, go back and walk through the parking lot. It means we're very busy, but I think it's really something that we need to do. And you look at this parking lot at the Cornerstone Church, and again, it's huge. And I almost think this is probably a golf cart job here. Uh, if we're really going to handle this, this is probably somebody dedicated to the parking lot with a radio who can radio us when there's a problem out there, but that is just driving around the parking lot and uh, and patrolling that parking lot. You know, those are the kind of things that I think we've got to pay attention. This story tells us right here that we've got to pay attention to the parking lots even more. I've already been mentioning it. Some of you have mentioned those kind of things. And we're right in the fact that we have got to pay more and more attention to the parking lot. Don't forget when it comes to efficiency, you can look at it as another position and I get it, but realistically there's people that are going to be potential problems in our church as well are also coming from the parking lot. So being in the, out in the parking lot is not a bad thing where we can see what's going on out in the parking lot, see who's out there, maybe start talking to a couple folks that seem suspicious out in the parking lot. We're on the radio saying, hey, could somebody else come out here uh, with me? And we're talking to these folks, whatever that looks like. But we're in the parking lot once in a while. We're trying to spend some time out there. And before and after services as people are coming in is very important. And then you see what happens. Why is this stuff all so important? It's about trying to minimize problems, improve our safety. And here's what happens. If you look at this story, go online and look at the story You'll find a pastor who's on there from a different church, it appears to me. and But he's on there trying to say to people, hey, don't let this kill your thought of going to church. Don't let this squelch your life and don't, don't not go to church. And he sees it. That's immediately what happens to our churches is we get a bad press on some kind of attack or something that happens at our church. People think it's not safe. And then our attendance goes down. And we don't want those kind of things. So it's important for us to invest as much as we can into keeping this place safe and secure. And I'm so happy you joined me for this one. Leave me a comment wherever you're watching this show at. Uh, and I hope if you're on YouTube, like and subscribe or like wherever you're at. Follow us and interact with us wherever you can. And then I also would encourage you, if you're on YouTube, like uh, like the channel, but also Take a look at this next video that's popping up right here because this is a good one to continue your education here and continue trying to improve in your church security mission.